I mean, a couple things stood out from from their big meeting over the last weekend. One was that they had no interest in getting into any of the banks, and I thought that was interesting because we think about some of where you know where these regionals are trading, how discounted they look, and for right. Warren Buffett to not even be flinching at it and not even have any interest is very telling to me in terms of what he's seeing for the financial future of these banks and the financial system. So, so that was very that kind of caught my attention because again, you know, he was the one when during the great recession he jumped into a bunch of the banks at these lows create like goldman sachs he got the sweetest of deals and he was willing to do it back then he's not mm -hmm. willing to replay that this time so i think that's something us as investors have to take into account in terms of other areas of interest you know it's hard to pinpoint what he'd be into but but i could see you know biotech is kind of an interesting area if you're looking for kind of the safety of of quality that pays a dividend, like an Amgen or something like that. Right. Um, those type of stocks, I could see him potentially putting money to work in. If you listen to experts like these, you can be assured that your investment in this asset will pay off in the long run, something that is important to everyone who puts money into the stock market and crypto. If you're interested in investing, you should watch this video because Gareth will utilize a graph to make predictions about all the assets. One of the most senior experts in the crypto and macro space, Gareth Soloway, will be discussing a wide range of topics today, including US CPI data and Fed cuts, the banking crisis, Bitcoin congestion versus price, Ethereum, Warren Buffett's billion-dollar dump, gold and silver portfolio strategy. Buffett's moves, the debt ceiling, and the ban on short selling of bank stocks. In today's video, Richard Hart will discuss his views on the recent Fed rate hikes and his comments on the blunders being made by Elon Musk in the market. By the way, if you're interested in learning about DeFi and discovering innovative projects, you may want to check out our Master in DeFi course. It's designed to help you understand DeFi in a fun and easy way, with lessons that you can access immediately. Right now, we're offering a special launch discount of 90% off. This course will also give you the skills you need to make the most of Pulse Chain when it's released. If you'd like to learn more, just click on the link in the description and become a true cryptopreneur. Now, without wasting any time, let's dive right into the video. Gareth Soloway shares his thoughts about cryptocurrency as well as Bitcoin price prediction, also where Bitcoin heads from here. Yeah, so so the 30,500 level was just an absolutely impressive technical range on Bitcoin. And the reason why, again, that was such a wall and price had so much trouble getting through it is if you go back to 2021, just before the big run up to 65,000, you could see that low right there. Yeah. Then we go right over here, that mid cycle bull market cycle low was right there. There and then right over here. So it made sense that Bitcoin again could go up into that level and then was rejected. Now, for me, I'm watching this 27,000 level super closely. Uh, right now, we're just above it at 27,700 or so. If that breaks, that kicks off another round of selling that probably takes us to 24 to 25,000. Now, the one thing I will say, and this is something I continue to be overall still thinking this is a bear market in crypto, that this is a bull mar a bear market rally. Um, the thinking there is not only technical, meaning we haven't got through this 30,500 level, but it's also a concern based on what we're seeing in Pepe and based on some of these other speculative um, crypto assets. And again, you know, you've been around a long time, you know, Paul, when you see that type of speculation, that's not the bottom yeah. of a market, that's the top mm -hmm. of a market. And that's, yeah. that to me is a big issue that I hope, I hope investors really do recognize. I, I think off of these levels, I'm still on a bearish position. And again, you know, if we were to establish ourselves over that 30,500 level, I think things could change just a little bit in terms of the Bitcoin market maybe being in their bottom phase or having a bottom. But right, right. now, I, I'm honestly, my biggest fear on in the crypto market is twofold. One, it's it's that you don't have regulation yet and the and the government is is very they're they're purposely delaying regulation to bring out the CBDC first, right? So it's it's yeah. the China playbook, and I know it's kind of crazy we're following China, but China outlawed Bitcoin, um, then they brought forth the digital yuan, and now they're letting Bitcoin kind of come back again. Yeah. The U.S. government didn't take that 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 case, but what they're doing is they're not giving any clarity in regulation. They're saying, oh, it's a security, it's not, it's it's this and that, to the point where Coinbase has had to say. 
we're going to sue the SEC to figure out what the heck is is what's going on here. Um, that is on purpose so that they can launch their CBDC. And what that does is it leaves it, – it keeps big money out of crypto right now, right? I mean you don't have hedge funds. You don't have a lot of these bigger players feeling comfortable to invest in it until – the government unveils their CBDC, and then I'm sure it'll coincide with some regulatory stuff. So for me, that's a that's a risk. And also, I look at the stock market, and I see everywhere signs of of complacency. Uh, the VIX being where it is, the pattern formation is is a replica of the psychology of the market chart, where just before it has a major major collapse. And so, if the markets, if the equity markets are going to drop big, 20, 30 percent. I have yeah. a hard time believing Bitcoin is going to hold up in that situation. Let's. What are Gareth Soloway thoughts about banking crisis? What's going to happen next? So for me, I, I do see that there's going to be some continued rotation out of the banks in terms of deposits, but I do think at least the fear of losing your money in a in a savings or checking account is kind of uh, now a distant memory, right? We've seen every bank that has failed so far. The Fed or the FDIC has said, "Hey, we'll pay out." whatever the the savings amount is no matter if it's above 250 or not so so i think that aspect is gone but i do think that there's so much dead weight on these banks and i think there's even yeah. more to come with commercial real estate issues that are going to pop up later this this year so so to me I'm looking at an, a banking sector that is going to be what I would call zombie banks, meaning that yeah. they're carrying massive amounts of unrealized losses. They don't have to actually mark to market these losses, but they are going to only grow over time. And at some point, that's going to be another pressure cooker on the system. So I do think metals. I think I think gold obviously is a recipient of that in some in some respects. I think crypto has shown glimpses of being that with Bitcoin and and early on when the banking crisis hit a a couple months ago, we saw a big pop in Bitcoin. The one thing All I would right. just point out is that recently, as as early as last week, I believe it was, um, we saw a couple banks down close to fifty percent. The banking sector was. What are Gareth Solaway's thoughts on how to trade Ethereum? So in terms of the chart itself, and I'll, I'll bring up my chart here so we can take a look, we're basically seeing ETH, we had that kind of blow off top right at the highs that took us to just over 2100. And now we're kind of stuck in this range. And again, you know, you do have a level underneath here, this upsloping trend line in this flat area around 1825 or so. On a technical yeah. basis, that is what you want to see ETH hold. If it breaks that, you head to 1700. That breaks, you're heading down to the 1500s. But right now, again, you know, you're in this sideways consolidation. Uh, ETH to me looks like it's struggling. A couple things that I didn't like about the price action here. When you popped up, you had a few sideways days and then it reversed 100% mm. of the move. Here was a nice green day and it reversed that move right away. So it seems like right now when ETH is popping, it's getting slammed down very, very hard, which means big money is looking to unload in this range, at least for now. Yeah. So I'd just be a little bit careful. I mean, those things are just standing out to me in terms of the price action. Um, and again, just something for everyone to kind of pay attention to. Yeah. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and enable notifications to stay updated with Richard's comments on other cryptocurrencies. By doing so, you won't miss any of our future uploads and can stay informed about Richard's insights on different digital assets. As far as Richard Hart is concerned, Elon Musk is having a disastrous time on the market. Elon Musk is making a huge error. He overpaid for Twitter. He bought the top. He's not good at timing markets. Um, the billionaire capitalist who buys a public forum and turns into a private playground. No, it was shit beforehand, please. The Twitter yeah. files proves it was even more shit than people thought. I agree. I agree. They're all, as you said, controlled. It's still by shit. People. They're controlled yeah. by a few people. Linux is not. Vitalik doesn't control Ethereum. He could yeah. die tomorrow and Ethereum would still yep. be. Yep. True. So I don't I don't have a problem with private people owning stuff that's cool. I I have a he wants to create a better world. And he thinks that free speech will do that. And I think he's actually wrong. I agree. Not oh my God, he's Richard. Wrong. I, not only is he wrong, but the system he's embedded in, capitalism, compels speech, compels it. Meaning, if you don't say what I want you to say, you get fired and replaced with someone who will say what I say. And yeah, the, to, the competition my, my doesn't make it any better. Free speech only improves the world if and only if people use that speech to advertise and propagate superior ideas and behaviors. If, however, free speech is only used to propagate stuff that sucks, in fact, it does harm.
And how do you and think so they do that? There, there is a fair amount of top down. Depend, it, there's some more and less. It depends on how lazy the top is. If the top's lazy, then the writers are going to just do whatever they want. If the top's actively eyeballing, then the writers are just going to do what the top wants. You have both kind of organizations. You got lazy ones, you got not lazy ones. And then you've got ones that just, they end up doing whatever their audience wants. So they're like, what does the audience want? Well, let's do whatever that is, which is how you get a lot of right, left looking things. Um, but the profit motive ruins everything is what I'm trying to say. Like Wikipedia doesn't have the profit motive, which is why you trust it. Imagine if it was like Wikipedia mm. by Fox News or by CNN. It's like, it's but so not, not all for profit things have failed in the same way. A lot of for-profit things have, no, but like it's a lot of times profit by and large makes things better. It, Sometimes it, it, it does. It only rarely makes things worse. And news seems to be one of those rare things that, it, yeah, it makes. Discussing the Federal Reserve System, Richard Hart offers his insights. I mean, I, I just, I would say that whatever they've done has failed society terribly. I don't think that eggs should be at all time high prices. I don't think a dozen eggs should cost $5. I don't think the, the concept that if you graduate high school, you'll never be able to buy a house ever because you'll never be able to afford it ever. You know, you, you used to be able to, so you can price things in hours. So a Big Mac used to cost, you used to buy like multiple Big Macs for an hour of work. Now you can't. So just priced in Big Macs the like commodity food of the world. You can't, uh, the commodity food of like the relatively organized world. You, you, you can't buy many, no matter how hard you work. And then you look at the price of houses or education and hours worked and you're just like, wow, you can't work enough hours to, to get anything. And so if you work by the hour, your life sucks. And there's quite well, little- Most people have to. About. What do you think about this professional advice provided by these experts? Tell us in the comments. We hope we were able to provide some value and helped you to move a step ahead in your crypto journey. Be sure to check out our crypto brand called Cryptopreneur and get yourself the highest quality crypto merch available right now on the market and make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of our content.